So a quick overview of crossbar mount systems for different types of vehicles. So this question has been coming up a lot lately of what type of crossbar system should I get? What would be good for my type of car? What is out there? What is reliable? And I thought I would do a live session. I tried one yesterday. Sadly, the quality was pretty terrible. The sound quality was horrible. So here's take two. The top companies that I know of that I've either used many of their pieces or other people I know have used and trusted over the years are Yakima, Thule, Malone. There are others, but those three seem to be the go-to amongst the kayaking community. I've been using Yakima systems for a long time. That's just the one that I started using. And what's great about these companies is that once you start with one piece, they're all interchangeable. And as you change vehicles, you can then use different parts of your system for new vehicles. You can just mix and match. The way the setup works is you'll have some kind of tower that will then attach to your roof and will hold on to some kind of crossbars. I happen to use the Yakima round bars, which are the most basic out of all the different crossbars. Different companies will have round or square bars. You can find more aerodynamic crossbars that are wide and very thin. They cut down on noise and they also help with fuel efficiency. These are not as fuel efficient. These usually make quite a bit of noise, but they're very basic. They're a little bit cheaper. They can take a beating. I've been using them for years and I have no problem with the round bars. Uh, one thing that does happen is when you put different types of kayak mounts on them, sometimes depending on how tight you have them, they might slip back and forth and rotate on them. One way to stop that is putting a little piece of rubber or something in between as it clamps down. That little bit of friction sometimes helps and keep those kayak mounts straight. The crossbars come in lots of different lengths. Here on hand, they have two sizes, an extra large, I believe is 68 inches. I have a 58 inches and a 48 inches. And so what I use is the 48 inch on the smallest of my vehicles, the 58 on the slightly larger one, and then the extra long on the van. Generally speaking, there's three types of roof setups for your vehicles. You might have a plain clean roof that doesn't have anything on it. You might have roof rails that usually come out of the front and go to the back of the car. Or if you have an older vehicle, a pickup or a van, you might have what's known as rain gutters on the sides. These will be a U or L shape that sticks out on the side of the car that usually carries water as it comes off the roof and then puts it out in the front or in the back of the vehicle. And they make towers that will attach to this. In the camper van, because of the pop top, there's these two extra brackets that fake having a gutter at that level because then the crossbars can be attached to the top of the vehicle. If I were to attach them to the gutters that are a little bit underneath, then I would not be able to raise the pop top while I have the crossbars on there. So the first one, if you happen to have a plain roof with nothing on it, you can find towers that will attach with some kind of base and then a clip on the side that will extend and grab onto the edge of the vehicle. So the pad will land either on the clean roof right on the edge of the doors or newer cars now have these rubberized channels on the roof on both sides and these types of towers will have a rubber foot that fits perfectly into that channel and then the clip will simply clip onto the edge of the roof. It'll compress in and stay in place. If it happen to have roof rails, you can use a tower that will grab onto that roof rail and attach the crossbars to it. And if you happen to have the rain gutters, you can use a tower like this. It has a clip. It'll grab onto that gutter, clamp on and hold it in place. Now, all of these towers and bars are all interchangeable. You can see here that this adapter on the tower allows me to put whatever type of crossbar system that I choose. So if I wanted to get the aerodynamic ones, I would simply need to change this piece right here and then I'd be able to put other types of crossbar systems using these exact same towers. To make things quieter, here you can see that I wrapped around a paracord the length of the crossbar. I was lazy, this was the first thing I found. Usually I would use a black one. What this does is that it disrupts the airflow enough so that you don't really hear, you don't hear the vibrations as the air goes through it. Because otherwise, if I was in the car without anything on it, at 40 miles an hour, I would hear a certain humming noise. And then at 50 and 60 miles an hour, I would hear different notes. 
that would just be the bar vibrating. So a little bit of paracord will just disrupt that airflow and then it'll just sound as if you had the window a little bit open. It won't be as quiet as not having them. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, there's also something called fairings that are a piece of plastic that you can put in front. I know several friends that have them and they use them and they work for them. For me, the paracord has been just fine, so I haven't had a problem. And once again, the more aerodynamic ones are supposed to be a little bit quieter. So that's about it. A quick overview of the different crossbar systems that are available depending on what car you use. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add, please leave a comment below. Subscribe if you like. I'm always trying to put these videos out. And as always, Luke Grover, Kai Gipster. Thank you for watching. See you next time.